Hey guys, if you click that link today, you're gonna to be wanting to see things about what you're looking for in a horse property out here in the mountains around the Pice Peak area. So stay tuned to the end and I'll give you a lot of great information. Hey guys, real quick for you in that video, this is, my name is James D with James D, my real estate team. And I just wanted to make sure if you haven't done this already, make sure you hit that subscription button down below the notification bell. What that does is keeps you notified. Every time we come up with a new video, we do at least two a week. And I just want to keep you updated and just cool things to do, cool things to see out here within the Woodland Park and Teller County area. And you get to see a little bit of how I like living my life out here as well. If you've got any questions or comments, please don't hesitate. Give me a call, shoot me a text at 719-266-2725. You can also email me at info at jdmret.net and I will get back to you as fast as I can to answer any of those questions or comments. And if you've got any real estate needs out here whatsoever, please, once again, don't hesitate. Give me a call or, or you know, shoot me that email or that text. This is James D with James D. My real estate team, the team leader here. And I absolutely love living here and I love helping people out here in this area too. Hope you guys like this video. Okay guys, first, I just wanna apologize. I really wanted to be out in my pasture with all horses doing this, but it snowed yesterday. We've got over four inches and I am just not sitting out in the snow and trying to keep my horses in the same place when there's snow and there's not any grazing around, unless I'm standing next to a hay bale, very difficult to do. So you got a little bit of stock footage behind me from different things out here as well. So just apologize for that, but it is mountains of Colorado and it is almost November here. And we finally have had our first big snow out here in 2022. So first, I just wanna kinda of go into this. There's lots of things to look at that's gonna be very unique to each individual four horse property. I'm just gonna go over some basic things that you're gonna to wanna to look at out here if you're looking to get a property that can either have horses on it or you've already got horses and you're bringing them out there with you. And I'm gonna keep this super simple just because if you've got specific needs, I wanna be able to address those and help those as those come up. If you've got any questions, don't hesitate to ask. You know the deal, if you can shoot me a text or email and I will get that question and answered as quickly as I can. But I also want you guys to know and understand I am coming from this as a horse owner myself. I've got my own horses. I went through the process of trying to figure out if it would even make sense to purchase property up here in the mountains with my horses or if it wouldn't. So I'm coming to you from my own unique personal experience on this and I've helped other clients find homes and, and properties that can support horses out here too. So that's where I'm coming from on this. Now, this is something that you know I love helping folks out with. I love the horse uh, lifestyle. I love having that, that nice big piece of land that we can have them on. I love being out in the rural areas with the stuff. So as we get into this, um, I hope this is very helpful for you guys. But some of the first things we're gonna look at is number one, identifying exactly right up front what exactly your specific needs are for a property. And when I say that, I'm talking about grazing ability. Uh, if it doesn't have grazing ability, do you have a barn that you can store hay in? Is it fenced? Is it cross fenced? Does it have a water source? All those different things. Um, so one of the, the big things that most folks will, will look at when they first start looking at a property that can house horses is, is it already fenced? Now, if you're looking at some very large pieces of property, it's not easy to get those fenced and it's not cheap, quite frankly. Uh, so we wanna make sure that if that's important to you and as you close, you're bringing your horses in, you've got a place to put them. Otherwise, you're gonna have to panel off some areas and do some temporary fencing until you can get that fencing out there. So fencing out here comes in all different types of shapes and forms. The most common you're gonna see on the perimeter of properties is probably gonna be a type of barbed wire, a three or four wire that you'll see out there. Um, and that'll be along the perimeters of the fences. You won't see a whole lot of electric fencing unless it's done in such a way that you don't have to worry about the horse not being grounded off on the snow, meaning you've got the hot line and the negative line uh, that'll actually be running in conjunction with each other. So the horse would have to contact both of those in order for that to work and keep them from going through that fence. Um, but those are very, very big deals. Obviously, when you're actually looking at getting a piece of property out here. Now, for me personally, I live in Divide. We get a good amount of rain for this area up here. We've got lots of cleared pasture land uh, on our property also. So in the summertime, our horses are able to graze. Now, this is not like anywhere else back east where you can put 
usually about a horse an acre on there and that the land can sustain itself, you absolutely will not be able to sustain that out here. We're looking at about a horse per 10 acres out here with how slower than grows. On the flip side of that, we do have lots of really high protein and really good grasses out here that they're able to eat and munch on too. So one of the things you're going to be looking at too is, is the ability to actually properly store hay if you don't have enough grazing land for your horse to be on, if part of your lot is going to be wooded or it's just not very big and you're wanting to manage your property so they don't eat everything down and then it turns into just nothing but you know, dirt and mud and all this other stuff, um, which some people, they'll let their horses eat that stuff down. Other folks will set up sacrifice pastures. Other folks will set up pens. They'll have horses or uh, barns with runs and that they'll keep the horses in so that way they can manage that better. But it's just a thought process of being able to get into what's going to work for you. What's always worked really well for us when we're on small properties is having a nice smaller fenced off area that's got the water in it um, that will actually uh, also uh, work as a sacrifice run or sacrifice area that they can eat the grass all the way down. doesn't matter. You're going to have hay in there when they're in there anyway, so they've got something to munch on and graze on. But you're not going to have them out in your pastures constantly. My wife and I, we had something very similar to this when we first moved here. We moved to Florissant. We rented it out for about six months, and it was only 10 acres. We had four horses that we brought up here, and we had two sacrifice areas. We split it up, two horses on each side with water on it, hayed them, and then mucked that area as well because obviously it's going to be a pretty congested area. Um, so we would always muck that once a day um, in that area, and then we'd set them out to the little pasture area, the grazing area that we had for exercise and stuff. And that would be dependent on how much that's been eaten down and how long you know we'd let them out there for that exercise time. It's all about horse management and time management for them in those areas out there too. Now, other things that are important for horses out here is having some form of shelter, both for, from wind and from any other kind of weather elements that kind of come in, whether it's rain, hail, snow, doesn't matter. Something that they can choose to get into if they need to, but wind is really one of the biggest ones out here. You see a lot of three-sided runs uh, that are placed up for horses to be able to get in and out of. If you've got a barn you can put them in, you just won't let them out during inclement weather. You can keep them in the barn during inclement weather so that way they can stay protected. But horses in general in the wild, a lot of times will have trees and different forests that they can get into to help block those winds, rock formations they can kind of back up to to help block those winds and block that, those weather phenomena from actually affecting them. So that is something else you're going to need to make sure you have with your property also. One of the other big elements of, of uh, purchasing horse property is, is how are you going to have water for them? Now we'll have another video that specifically talks about wells and uh, the different types of wells that do and don't allow horses and what we need to look for in that. But in the general sense of water, I mean, you're going to need to have water out there and we get very low temperatures up here. So you need to have something that's got the ability to, to maintain its liquid form during the wintertime also. Summertime, it's not really as big of a deal, but if you're putting stock tanks out there or any kind of buckets of water, they're going to need to have heating elements in them, which also means you're going to have to have electricity that can drive, drive that out there to them to keep them from freezing solid. Um, on there also. So that's really, really important to have as well. Even if you do have a great piece of property that actually has running water through it, my wife and I have that. We're super happy with that. You're not allowed to use that for your specific, like your primary watering for the horses. You're not going to keep your horses from drinking, but you need to have another source of water for them to drink uh, per the way the law states in, in Colorado <laughs> with water law and, and <laughs> I've got an attorney that can handle that if you guys want to get more into that because that gets crazy. But I've got a real estate attorney who specializes in water law out here and he, he can direct folks if they want to get really into that. Um, but even those moving creeks will freeze in the wintertime and the horses won't be able to get into those. So you definitely need to have a plan for water, whether it's automatic waters, whether it is the stock tanks and you're actually putting the heaters in those. Tractor Supply sells those heaters. All the feed stores around here, especially in the wintertime, are going to sell those heaters too. But then also making sure you've got the correct amperage of an extension cord that's going out there also. Otherwise, you could potentially start a fire or electrocute a horse or yourself on that as well. So making sure you're, you're maintaining that and, and ensuring that that's going to be a safe atmosphere for your horses to be able to get water too. So um, those are some of the basics. Uh, not every piece of land out here is going to allow 
horses. Some of them will have covenants out here that restrict horses. Some of them will have HOAs that restrict horses. But usually when you get out into the more rural areas of the Teller County and the Pice Peak region, you're going to be able to have a horse on that. But that'll be something that we check during the due diligence time frame. Um, and we're, we're making sure that you're getting those covenants and getting all that information so you can decide if that land is going to be of the right use for you during that process also. So I hope this really helps kind of drive home what we're looking at, some of the main just basic characteristics of getting a horse property up here in the mountains. And I hope you guys really enjoy this series. Um, I'm enjoying doing the videoing for it because I love talking about this stuff. And I hope you guys find this very useful. I really hope you guys enjoyed that video. Don't forget, if you've got any questions, comments, whatever you've got, please send them to me. You can call or text me at 719-266-2725. You can also email me at info at jdmret.net. I would love to be your local real estate agent. I'd love to be your local expert. So anything, it doesn't have to be real estate related, please don't hesitate to ask. Let me know what those questions are and I will get them right back to you. I look forward to seeing you guys next time.